So I have multiple copies of this book because I love it and I love using it for um, <clears throat> junk journaling. We're using it as actual pages and signatures, but also for sort of cutting into. So just to show you the inside, I've already been into this one and I have... Um, what I try to do, these bits at the front tend not to come out in, in double pages, if, if you see what I mean. They tend to get stuck on this part here. But then you can see here that I have got these are all kind of intact. So I just literally go through and um, put the, the little binding um, cotton uh, on those. So I've already been through and um, done that for the entire thing. So I've got here absolutely loads that I can use either for um, signatures or to cut into. Um, and uh, at some point, the um, take that out cover, which I can cut into the dust jacket. Sorry, I'm gonna try and get this off so that I can get this nice picture off but also then I've got this hard cover that I can use um I can upcycle this um and I will probably do that for um an art journal um but we'll see we'll see how we go I as I said I really like the um, Country of a Diary of an Edwardian Lady, but um, Hobbycraft uh, a little while ago was selling off um, what they had from this. I've got this 12 by 12 paper pack, which is some beautiful, pretty designs in here. Um, there was um, a six by six paper pack, which I bought. It, when I first bought it, I thought it, it was the same designs, but smaller. But actually, I think there's only um, the one, this one, that is the same. All the others seem to be different, which is ah, just amazing. Um, so this one we'll probably use for um, in signatures because it's bigger and compared into this one probably more for collage. And then there were <clears throat> these um, stickers. So then they're kind of um, more cardboard stickers and there's two, two lots of those used, to use for embellishment. And um, I'm not greatly into stamping, but these were so cheap. Um, I couldn't um, resist them. There's a, a butterfly. Um, there's a bee, sort of flowers, a swallow, and a leaf. Um, and they're, they're reasonably good size. Let me um, show you, they are really nice size. Now, they do look like they're, they're discoloring a bit, but actually, it doesn't put me off. Um, I would imagine they've been sat around for quite a while. They've not been used. The discoloration is not, it's kind of down in. Um, and that's what happens sometimes with these clear stamps. But, you know, the, for the price I paid, they were absolutely brilliant. So um, I do like to use up my stash, but there are occasions where, <laughs> when I just like to have a bit of a, a splash out on some newer stuff. It isn't new. Obviously, this stuff has been around for a long time um, and obviously wasn't selling. But for me, it's absolutely perfect. I'm just going to put this all to one side because I need to decide um, on the size of the, I don't know what I'm going to call it, it's a book, it's a journal, it's a junk journal maybe because I'm going to use bits and pieces, um, but I need to decide um, what I want to do. I, I'm, my intention is to use one of the fabrics to cover um, the, the to cover the covers um but it's a case of i'm going to need to decide um on a, a size first i 
have lots of grey balls. There's also a bit of balsa, as I can see in there. Grey board. Um, I, I tend to collect it if it's in packaging, but I've also bought some over the years. I have many, many years ago when I was selling crafts, I um, used to make spiral band notebooks. Um, so I have these that I used to buy, um, three cup sizes, and you can see I I bought them in vast quantities. What I'm looking for, probably actually these ones, because I'm, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking six by six. Uh, yeah, six by six is the way to go. And these, because I want to cover the boards with fabric, so there's going to be nothing else to sort of keep it rigid. I've gone for, well, I say I've gone for these. These luckily, because they're the only two this size, are quite thick. So I'm going to use those. Um, but you know, great board, not cheap, but you can get hold of it online. Um, but do keep hold of. Have a look, you see, we've even got sheets of paper from when I used to do spiral binds. I tend not to throw. Um, that would be the bin for a four by four. You see, I've got A4. I mean, if I just bring that up, you can see I've got all sorts of thicknesses of grey board, but yeah. And this this is mount board. So mount board is, e is equally as good for um your covers. So um yeah, we're gonna go with six by six. And I think I'm thinking that because with the 12 by 12 papers, I can get um I can cut them in half and get two bits for my signatures. Okay. Um my intention is to do um ones with a covered spine. Um, I'm probably not going to show you everything because it's quite um, time consuming, but I'll kind of I dip in and out, um, maybe speed things up. I'm just literally going to let, for me, let this video roll um, while I'm making, and then I will um, uh, slow it down or stop it or cut out bits that are completely irrelevant. Okay. I have um, six signatures made now. So um, each one consists of three um, half sheet of the three of the half sheets of the twelve by twelve pad, and one um, sheet from um, the uh, country driver and Edward and Lady. So I've got these six. Okay, so the next thing to do now is to um, <clears throat> uh, get these. Uh, the holes punched in these ready for sewing together. I'm going to use uh, some pieces of equipment from Janie's Originals. Um, so I've got the piercing ruler here, which has um, these little grooves here, which We'll be using when we use the, the cradle to punch the holes. Um, and then it's got a similar set of holes in the middle lining up with these. And these 
you can use when you're punching your, if you need to punch into your spine. Um, and then this side is a deckle edge, which you can use for tearing. So what I'm going to do is just mark where I want to punch. So I'm going to um, be creating, um, bear with me, uh, six holes. Um, we're going to do, um, I might just move it across. You can play around with this. The good thing is we're going to mark it with a dry wipe. So if it, if it doesn't go quite right, um, then it's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I want to, this one and this one. So what I've actually done is I've gone kind of halfway between two here and roughly the same there rather than right on the edge. Um, so these are going to be where we do... Um, I think it's called a kettle stitch, but when I'm still learning all these things. And then I need um, on the on the and on the on the sorry, yes. So I've basically got my six holes. So uh, okay, now this is then going to sit in my punching cradle. Ah, now the one thing I've just realized I didn't do, which is really important, I needed to, um, <laughs> excuse me, I needed to mark on here the ends of the signature. And this is so that I can make sure when I put this in the cradle that I get my signatures in, I get it lined up with my signatures. So you can see here that I can now, I've, I've pushed the ruler up against this end. I've lined the ends of my signature with my the lines I made and now what I'm going to do you've got these nice little holes here and I'm just literally going to push down and there you can hear that one through I don't think I went right through on that one no, there we go so I am just punching holes or creating holes Sorry, my hand's gone over like so. So you can see I've got the holes punched. And so I'm going to do that for all of my signatures. Okay. So that is my first one. I'm just using the um, the boards to uh, mark on the signatures where I want to just trim them down to. So I'm just um, doing all of that. Use the ruler to make sure they're all kind of down and in. And then just bring that line. It isn't always that easy to see, but I should be able to to work it out when I come to um stick up them. To do the cutting, I'm using this. This is um what's called a book hook from Jamie's original. You can see it. Um this this bit here hooks over the edge of your desk, so you can't actually see it on the edge of my desk. So that's sort of firmly in place. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back in, just need to check where I do my lines. I'm just about to see. So what I'm doing 
is I'm putting my um, signature up against this edge, then I'm making sure that my the metal edge of my ruler is out here where I've drawn my line. And then the idea really is I'm not going to stand up because it will um well, I will try next sorry that was my chair just crushing against radiator. And you you the pressure needs to be on your ruler, not on your knife. So you're literally just going to do a nice sharp knife and I have just put a blade in and just you can see that small bits are coming off. And you keep going until you've got all the way through your signature. But remember, the pressure is on the ruler and not on the knife. And then hopefully I've cut that in the right place. And you can see that that now fits. So if I just do that again. So I'm bringing in my signature, butting it up against this side of the book hook. The ruler butts up against this top so you know you've got a nice 90 degrees. You put your pressure on the ruler, make sure that, that the um, metal edge is here, and then a nice sharp knife. Now I know Janie has, you, um, uses the uh, snap-off ones, but I don't have this so I just have a nice new blade in this one and you just use your knife multiple times until you've gone all the way through no massive pressure on the knife and then it gives you your signature which is nice nicely lined up with that so I'm going to um Get on and do my other four.